So imagine if the horrors you have seen in sci-fi movies, the space monsters of other worlds were really there in outer space. How far would they be from our planet Earth? Let's take a look at 20 or so monsters here in this video starting from the nearest to the furthest. Let's get to it. Just next door in cosmic terms, Calvin the alien creature from the movie Life is a reminder that life from other worlds isn't always benevolent. The life form was discovered as a sample of organic tissue but began to grow into a multicellular form and bigger upon absorbing water and nutrients. It then absorbs everything it can and began killing everyone on the spacecraft. Calvin or its species was suspected to have killed everything, every living thing on Mars, which is only 62 million kilometers away at its nearest point. So next, out past the gas giants drifting in the icy reaches near Neptune, 4.3 billion kilometers away from Earth floats the cursed Event Horizon, a ghost ship which is possessed by the devil itself. After traveling through an alternate dimension, in an attempt by its gravity drive to travel faster than light, any crew foolish enough to board it might never return neither sane nor alive. Then when we travel further, reaching to our nearest stellar neighbor Alpha Centauri, which is only 4.3 light years away, we find the idyllic moon of Pandora orbiting a gas giant planet called Polyphemus. Here we would find a Navi people from the movie Avatar and the wildlife of the planet which includes deadly predators that can swallow a man whole in a second like the Thanator or the Tauruk. Leaving this system and after some course correction we reach a pair of planetoids some 39 light years away which are seen as barren rocks. These are LV426 and LV223 in the Zedi Reticuli system and here the scariest aliens in fiction await. These are the perfect organisms, the xenomorphs which are death incarnate. They are like black vipers in the night sky, slithering and ambushing closer with every breath you take, with their acidic blood being a mockery of survival itself. Now going further, at a distance 8 times further away, we find the shimmering desert seas of Arrakis. Here the sandworms coil under dunes and some are as large as mountains. They are the gods of their arid world. Their very presence is a spectacle. This is the planet where the main events of Dune take place. Although the location of the planet Arrakis isn't directly told to us, the main consensus is that it orbits the star called Canopus, which is almost 310 light years away. So even further out between 750 and 1650 light years away lies a region of space filled with dark clouds of cosmic dust that obscures the middle of the galactic plane of the Milky Way galaxy. Somewhere here, in a place called the Shadow Sector, lies Greta from the anthology series Love, Death and Robots. She is a spider ant like alien with telephatic abilities whose hive ensnared a ship after a rooting error knocks it off course. Whether just lonely or toying with her food, Greta's mind bending ability is the stuff of nightmares. Then next somewhere in the Aegis 7 planet within an unknown star in the spanning Cygnus constellation direction between 11 and 2615 light years away lies a marker laid by the brethren moons which converts biomass into space zombies with weaponized mutations called the necromorphs. Of course this is from the game Dead Space which is a modern embodiment of the Lovecraftian horror where the dead bodies would eventually converge into a single entity and become a living moon. Now 2000 light years away from Earth lies a star called BD plus 48740 which is a giant star suspected of having recently engulfed one of its planets. But in the anime Godzilla the Planet Eater, it was actually a god-like entity that devoured the planet and this is Void Ghidorah and it is a less of a creature and more of a force of unmaking nature. Although it isn't originally from there, the planet of the aliens called Exif devoured by Void Ghidorah was situated in that particular system and the creature was last seen there before coming to Earth. Then the genesis of cosmic horror, Cthulhu the Great Dreamer, although now lies entombed beneath Arlea in the Pacific Ocean. His origins are actually interstellar and was spawned in a planet called Vul, which is stated to be in a 23rd nebula and after this he travelled into a star called Zoth and created his own star spawns. His reach transcends space, his malice ignoring the boundaries of light years and thus no human measure can accurately 
calculate the distance to Vool, his homeworld from planet Earth, but it's somewhere there. Now, even though the exact location is unknown, the halo rings were stated to be 7 in number, with a range and distance from one another of 25,000 light years. These halo rings, more specifically Installation 04 and 05, where the parasitic flood and its leader, the gigantic grave mine, slumbers from the game Halo, these are the nearest to Earth, with either one of them being almost, or at the most, 25,000 light years away. That is if the Earth was exactly equidistant from both of them, or it could be that one of them is quite closer. The next, if a parasitic flood isn't scary enough, imagine genocidal giant robots, cybernetic beings, bearing the name of Decepticons. These faction of the Transformers are the current rulers of Cybertron. After the great civil war against the Autobots, which are kind of like a more kind of more benevolent robot, cybernetic beings. Cybertron isn't a welcoming world for any space traveling human, with the original comic stating that it was 4.3 light years away in Alpha Centauri, but as of the G1 continuity, it is actually quite far, some 50,000 light years away. So even further out, 60,000 light years away, the Zerg can be found in a place called the Cop Ruler Sector here in the Milky Way galaxy, where they migrated a while back from the Galactic Center. These are a ravenous insected hive mind species from the Starcraft universe, created by the ancient Zelnaga as part of their experiments to craft the perfect life form. They have since spread across the Cop Ruler Sector like a plague, overwhelming worlds with their numbers and hyper evolution abilities. Next, after traversing through the nothingness of space, in a dark void we might bump into an actual god. This entity is not bound by systems or stars. Unicron. He is the void itself, a devourer of worlds and hopes. He wanders the cosmic abyss as a shadow darkening everything in his path. No distance is too far for his hunger. Also in the same emptiness of space, we might find another world-ending threat in the form of the Reapers from the Mass Effect game which are massive biomechanical ships that harvest life like a locust feasting on ripe grain. Then on the opposite side of the Milky Way galaxy lies an alien insect threat. These are the arachnids of Glendathu. In the Starship Troopers movie, or movies, humanity wages wars of attrition, fighting against the alien menace with hive minds working to end our species. They may be a distant threat, but their tactics and tenacity make them or makes the void between us feel fragile. The arachnids are from the Glandathu system, which is between 50 to 100,000 light years away in the opposite side of the galactic center. Then in the same part of space but 40,000 light years in the future, we might actually encounter an endless swarm drifting through the Milky Way galaxy. These are an extra galactic threat and they are called the Tyranids, whose sole purpose is to consume biomass and spread and propagate even at their farthest point, they are close enough to be nightmares. They are the galaxy's ultimate predator. They are adaptable and unrelenting. But rest assured, as they are still traversing the intergalactic void as of now, and they won't be a threat till 40,000 years in the future. Then beyond the Milky Way, in the cold embrace of another galaxy called Andromeda, 2 million light years away, Null's own creations, the symbiotes, have trapped him in a prison planet called Clintar, which means cage. This planet is composed of the constituent dark living abyss, which is part of the symbiotes as well. The symbiotes here are a parasitic organism that bond with hosts, granting them enhanced abilities while feeding on them all their emotions and their hormones, often amplifying negative ones like rage or fear. And on the same Andromeda galaxy 2 million light years away, we also find a celestial from the Marvel Universe, one that is in the form of a living planet masquerading as a world. As Star-Lord's father in the MCU, Ego drifts in solitude plotting his dominion over the entire universe and pondering how to recreate the cosmos in his own image. And then lastly, there is a galaxy far far away and probably a long long time ago and this mega cluster of stars, a myriad of monsters live and one in particular, a leviathan swimming in the folds of a space hurricane called the Achates Maelstrom awaits as a living trap. This is the Summa Verminoth from Solo, a Star Wars story. It and other monsters like the Space Slug, the Crate Dragon and many more make up the cosmic horrors of the franchise of Star Wars. 
Now that's the end of the video on the most distant and closest alien monsters to Earth. Support us by liking and subscribing and we'll see you guys in the next one. Also share this video with your friends as the YouTube overlords don't really care about us anymore. Take care fam.